I'm ready. I will start. Um, OK, so this is kind of just a overview of uh, artwork I've made since I moved to New Haven, which was in 2007. Um, I didn't have a studio, and I didn't really know what to focus on, but the highways in New Haven sort of drew me to them. So I started uh, painting on site uh, outside. Um, so these are the two of these are the early paintings. Um, I bought a French easel and I would go set up under a highway and um, paint for a day or two uh, and um, encountered uh, a lot of interesting uh, conversations. People were very curious uh, as to what I was exactly painting. Um, it was uh, the highways, the overpasses, especially uh, when you're underneath them, there's sort of this like, uh, sort of this non-zone, it's like sort of invisible space, unused space. Um, there are these um, sort of um, connections between neighborhoods, but um, they, they really divide up the, the city. And so by um, painting them, uh, <clears throat> it would often sort of activate uh, the, those spaces or those areas where people would you know, become curious and stop and talk. Uh, and so the art became sort of a conduit to sort of me getting to know the city and, and trying to understand, you know, kind of who is around, like uh, who is who is in these neighborhoods, uh, things like that. Um, this one is actually from Brooklyn, not from New Haven, but um, same thing where um, I was painting this old uh, Citroen dealership and everyone in Gowanus uh, was, would stop to, to look at it and, you know, normally just walk right by it. It was something that they would just walk by on a daily basis. I got that comment. Uh, from several people. Um, this, uh, I, I finally got a studio and it was on uh, the corner of Church and Crown and it was above the old Macy's site. And so I watched them, I made a painting of them demolishing the Macy's and then this one of building Gateway College. So I spent several months watching uh, this construction and then documenting it. Um, I got interested in the 9591 reconstruction project, which just was happened to be happening and I was doing these highway paintings. So I started documenting those. So this is early, like 2011 maybe. Uh, you can see the old highway structure and they're building the new one. That thing's called a diesel hammer. I found that out from a construction worker. Um, then I started working larger. Uh, so I would take photos of sites that I really liked and then I would work them up into large scale paintings. Uh, so I start, uh, wasn't painting on site as much and I started really trying to grasp the, the scope of and the scale of the project. They seemed like they demanded larger pieces um, as the project went on. This one is the flyover um, from 95 to downtown. Uh, this is the painting where I swore I would never paint dirt ever again. Um, but it was uh, a really amazing structure and, and all these like ruins with the new, the new highway structure above it. Uh, this slide's a little green, but um, it's, uh, this is the Stony Creek Quarry, so a little bit of a deviation from the highway stuff. Um, and um, this was a really fascinating piece to do. Um, just the scale of that place was really overwhelming and amazing. Um, back to the highway stuff, I started doing these kind of like overlays of the old highway with some of what was existing or what was to become um, kind of uh, like a um, multi-frame, uh, 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 multiple exposure uh, photograph. And then after the highway project finished, I sort of, the, the momentum, I sort of lost the momentum. Um, this one, I never showed this piece, so I thought I'd put in here. Uh, this piece was uh, over four studios and six years. Uh, of painting the Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band cover. Um, it started as just pr uh, practice painting faces and it sort of morphed into this mutant project where I started um, including members of their family and people from their actual life out off to the right in black and white. And then the Sgt. Pepper's like the, the stage for the characters, you know, became the colored uh, sort of centerpiece. Um, and then, uh, then it turned into sort of a, a self-portrait where I included myself in the painting. Um, and uh, so six years, uh, four studios, countless hours of work, and I made a self-portrait where I'm not even facing the viewer and I'm very tiny. But um, it was a really fun project to do. And I, it, I, I think in terms of the amount of hours spent on, on actually working with the medium, it, it, it really, uh, it was a huge bump in my, my technical ability. 
Um, uh, not 20 seconds. Uh, the 20 second thing is hard. All right, uh, then I, um, I gave up oil painting for a while because it was taking too long. So I started doing artwork of things that you use very quickly. So these are disposable uh, condiments and like throwaway coffee cups. So I started doing some prints. Um, the right one was made at Makehaven, actually almost entirely at Makehaven. Uh, these are watercolors. Um, so I became sort of fascinated with uh, these items that we use for three seconds and then just discard um, and then spend time actually uh, looking at them and, and and observing them and, and making these these paintings, even though these are a little bit faster than say a, an oil painting might be. Um, the takeout bag, the sort of ubiquitous takeout bag with the smiley face on it that comes in different colors now, I found out. Um, I ate a lot of takeout in the three years that I made this, so much sodium, you cannot believe how thirsty uh, I was. Um, and then this is the last one of these that I ever did. Uh, this I did very recently. Um, where I just really liked the form of these hot sauce bottles and I uh, started playing a little bit with the perspective and kind of um, distorting them a bit in terms of the, the, the yeah to the perspective. So this is sort of, sort of a new chapter of that um, food item. And now I'm back to doing oil paintings again. I'm doing dogs with jobs. So um, if you, uh, the, I'm doing these on commission. If you're interested, I'll put my contact info in the chat if you want. Uh, your pet, I do cats too, or birds or whatever, snakes, but um, they have to have a job. Michael, what, what mediums are you working in right now? Um, right now, I'm really just working on the dogs, uh, so that's oil. Um, I supposed to be working on those watercolors. Like I wanted to do more with the hot sauce. I just haven't haven't done it yet. Um, but yeah, right now I'm just yeah, just the little the little dog oil paintings is what I'm doing right now. So um, it's kind of a new thing. Um, yeah. Was there an inspiration for it, or you just? Um, it, it, it actually, yeah, it actually started uh, as a um, conversation uh, with a friend. She has these two dogs, and she always wanted uh, these like um, uh, like nautical portraits of them. And uh, so I was like, "Well, I, I can I know how to paint. I can I can do that." Um, so then it just went from there. And I I you know every time I would tell someone about it, they would be like, "Oh, that's so cool! Like I'd love to have one." So it just you know it just became a way to I don't know. Sometimes series of work just kind of find you, and you don't really know what you're doing or why you're doing what you're doing until something gives you a direction and a reason. And then you just, you know, if the energy's there, you go with it. So, yeah. Well, Michael, do you have a studio in New Haven? Uh, I working out of my house right now. I had a studio for years and decided to consolidate. So now I'm just working out of my house, um, which is fine for right now. It's, it's working pretty well. <laughs> 